Welcome back to our panel discussion, Managing Mobility to Deliver Anywhere, Anytime Government, sponsored by Mobile Iron here on Federal News Radio 1500 AM and federalnewsradio.com. I'm your moderator, Tom Temin. Our guests today are Hildy Ferriolo, computer scientist at NIST. Vincent Stridipan is program manager for Mobile Security R&D at Homeland Security's Science and Technology Directorate. Jake Marcellus is Mobility Portfolio Manager at the Defense Information Systems Agency. Dave Harrity is Associate CIO for Enterprise Infrastructure and Operations at the General Services Administration. And Sean Frazier, Chief Technical Evangelist for the Public Sector at Mobile Iron. And I want to talk about the idea of systems modernization. This is something every federal agency faces. It's a concern uh, of the Obama administration. It has become a concern of the Trump administration, and it's certainly a concern of Congress. There's various bills. But it seems to me that modernization involves applications and data centers and lots of things, depending on the context. But in all cases, it's probably safe to say that the new SMAC mobile uh, c computing paradigm, if you want to call that, or architecture, has got to be part of modernization. So if you would comment on how we go forward with what is already the infrastructure of the federal government with an eye toward that future mobility that we all envision. IT modernization comes in a, a couple steps, right? In the sense of, you know, you have opportunity in the case of mobile. I mean, mobile's where we're going, but the idea of developing something once and having it cross-platform, being deployed all over the place, having a, a back-end as a service, you know, mobile implementation so that I can securely connect to legacy infrastructure and databases. Um, so you're going to see that there's a, an approach of embracing mobility and doing it in such a way that's both smart and f efficient and economically feasible, right? So the, the other aspect, though, is that you're going to have to deal with legacy systems, right? Some things that are just hard to maintain, um, and they really want to move and just shift over. But the migration, uh, you know, integration, all of that comes at an expense, time, resources that go with it. So planning that out, figuring out how we build and move forward to mobility, I mean, that's going to be critical on how IT modernization will go forward. Um, and, and also the aspect of security, right? So the last piece I'll say that when you think about how we've done legacy IT, how we've done IT today, you know, we, we do have that layered defense aspect. And I think IT modernization gives us opportunity to bring you know, the same levels of, of security and understanding that we have already established well-rooted in, in our IT infrastructure and have the same types of um, requirements with funding, right, for mobile as you go forward. So now we're going to be able to do our mission better, uh, more efficient, effective ways, but also look at the sense that it's still secure. So if you were to say to a contractor or to some sort of systems integrator that you want to modernize this legacy system, this COBOL system, whatever the logic in it is, if you were to say, but we really, the most important thing is a mobile front end to this because this is the way the world is moving, this is the way we want, want our employees to work and our citizen constituents to work, then you would almost start with mobile, move backwards, and then you would push the legacy stuff out the back door. Potentially. Uh, it, it really depends on the data set, right? So depending on how sensitive the data is, how I can actually port it over, some things just can't be. So you might need some middleware in, in the middle to, to interpret or make that transition over. Sometimes some people just make the leap of faith and say, hey, you know, forget the old data. I'm going to purge it. I'm going to start new and fresh. Um, those are the types of decisions that CIOs and other IT leaders are going to have to make. Jake, what's your perspective? Yeah, so I'll, I'll talk about it um, in a little bit of a context of the device. And what, the way I, I see this is, what is the right platform for me to just do my job more effectively? So uh, last week, uh, I had a discussion with some folks who do enterprise property management. And they talked about having in, uh, basically specialized devices that do barcodes. And they said, hey, Jake, um, I think we can probably build an app to do that and um, replace the 1,500 devices, specialized devices that we have. And I said, well, wow, wouldn't that be great? And I said, well, what's your workforce like that does this type of work? Well, well, it's about tenfold of the devices that we have. And I said, well, wouldn't it be great to just, you know, replace that functionality with an app since we already know that the handheld mobility device already has the functions that can do scanners? And so, so that's the type of innovation, you know, that we see with modernization because uh, you know, because a device that costs a fraction that's multi-purpose that a person may already have can do an additional function, it saves money. I mean, just 
just all aspects of efficiency seem to be there. So that, that's, that's one of the things, right? What's the right device for you and how does it, how does it improve your, yeah, your plus job? Plus there's already 25,000 barcode reading apps out there. Yes. You don't even have to develop one. You can right. just pick one and, and kind of make it safe. And Hildy, before we get to you, I want to ask Dave on the civilian side, you, there's many vehicles for modernizing uh, and services related there too from GSA. How does mobility get baked into what agencies are doing? So a lot of the vendors that we have across both our GSA contracts and others, as soup, so on, have uh, built into their structures uh, mobile as part of their playbook. It's part of our playbook typically um, across, I would say, all civilian sectors to put in uh, requests related to um, Agile development. We're going more. We're going less from this large behemoth kind of. Uh, you know, I want this at the end of two years. To I want delivery within three months of you know award and small incremental development. So uh, part of that can be certainly can be mobile. So you don't have to be mobile day one, and you can you can quickly iterate with agile development to create solutions, create features, and transition that modernization from legacy, you don't have to have, potentially you might have two, um, both the old and the new, and slowly migrate that over, as long as you can possibly maintain it as cost neutral or cost negative, particularly if the new platform with open APIs and a lot of open source technologies allow you to have lower cost, higher uh, throughput, and provide value at a very rapid pace compared to legacy uh, modernization uh, tactics that are used. Okay, and so Hildy, what does NIST tell us uh, in terms of modernizing mobility security as a complex? Yeah, it's a complex um, topic. Um, just to make sure that um, I think sometimes it's missing is the value add um, to show um, your CIOs, your um, your management that um, the value add and, and uh, savings that can be obtained. Um, by modernization as well. Um, also, planning is very important to, um, as David is saying, to do maybe in, in tandem implementation of it. So both uh, are the old and the new way are still possible um, at the same time, and then taking it step by step um, as well. All right. Yeah. So yeah, that does relate to what Dave said. We don't have to boil it all today, but right. you have a you have an architecture and an end state in mind and you go agilely through that. Yeah, I think that's the, the key that they said is moving, you know, agile, moving quickly and being able to look at those things. You know, Jake brought up a good point, being able to, to kind of mobilize these things discreetly as you see them. So as you see, you know, kind of something that's a legacy application that you need access to, being able to say from a, from a mobile perspective and look at that application and say, okay, how quickly can I get this to a mobile device and, and kind of modernize that. And those are all, all the things that are inside your control and, and people are making kind of build versus buy decisions all the time about do I go and build this or do I go to the app store and buy this or get it maybe even get it for free and then there's the whole implication of how do I support that and secure that. But those are the kinds of conversations at least in the private sector that folks have been having for five or six years because it comes down to cost, it comes down to delivering services quickly. And when you say app store that gets to another question which we've discussed in another context and that is uh, cybersecurity access derived credentials, how you log on with mobile devices, because many apps are not allowed in the sandbox that is the federal space on a mobile device, and there's all sorts of technologies to make sure cut and paste and emails and so forth can't cross that, that membrane of the sandbox, if you will. So I want to talk about log on credentials and how that all changes in the mobile context, because I know DISA is I guess it was charged by uh, the former DOD CIO, time to get rid of the CAC, you know, altogether. And well, you know, that could be a 10 year effort. Um, but you got to start somewhere, just like w we said earlier on, on modernization. So, what about gr derived credentials and the whole idea of your device and the cybersecurity model for it? I can start off. We, we started a couple of years ago um, with a soft cert pilot, right, which was basically a side loaded credentials. And I'm, I'm happy to report um, <clears throat> late last year, we started with the uh, purebred program, which is a uh, over the air push of a credential. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's a great thing uh, because it allows all of our 60,000 plus uh, users to actually have a credential, right? Because without a credential, 
um, you, you can't authenticate into anything, right? We understand username and password is just, just is, is, is prohibited, right? Um, as, as well as look, look, looking at things like uh, being able to send and receive encrypted emails, right? Very important uh, aspect of, uh, our, of our unclass program. Um, the one thing we are interested in, in is uh, more enhanced um, dual factor authentication, right? Using uh, some of the technologies that exist today and some that we're excited that are that we're hearing that will be coming out in the future on chips, right? Uh, more robust uh, fingerprint scanners and iris scanners, um, so so we can actually get to the the, the true dual. Dual yeah, this factor. dual factor, I guess typically the model is the fingerprint and maybe the, uh, the code that is sent from a server, uh, even you know, Google sends that kind of thing, or RSA, that, that model. Are those going to be our favorite two factors, or what else could be coming into the picture here, Dave? You know, the trust with the various opportunities that offer the drive credentials, so there's software-based capabilities um, where it's very seamless. One, you know, it might be one and done uh, for a period of 60 days, 90 days, whatever, to, that gives you a you know, high reasonability that the person who's got this device in their hand is that person that you want to have, to have that device in their hand. Um, and so you have uh, SD micro card, uh, microchip cards, uh, you have USB uh, credentials. And so, you know, the burden is not to have it where every time you, imagine if we had a, a mobile devices where every time you wanted to read one email, you would do a username and password. We, it would be unacceptable. So that same level of unacceptability is, is now moving into editing a document, um, checking time and attendance, um, making, you know, even localized, it could be a, a shuttle bus schedule um, to go inside of, you know, drive around DC um, from various buildings. And so we've got to make this very easy to use for, for an employee uh, or any staff member for the department and really allow it to just be a very seamless kind of integrated experience. Um, well, you don't have to have you know a three-hour training class to be able to use your mobile device. I've heard in the past that if if you're if you need a training program for an app, then it's not an app at all. You know you need like three sheets, like most commercialized. You download an app, it gives you like three little. This is what I do with little arrows, and then you're you're kind of left to your own. We need to have that same philosophy. So if it's um, not as easy as Snapchat. It's not as easy. Use it. Yeah, it's exactly. I mean. Yeah. Back to the youth uh, equation, more and more people demand this, uh, and rightfully so, and, and it's our opportunity and our, um, our need to deliver that. Yeah, go ahead. So, so DHS s and actually does research in this area uh, where we're looking at uh, different types of technology behavioral based. So you can have the, the derived credential, a soft certificate, whatever you want to put, um, and you can have different factors. So the combination of a multi-factor approach, right, it can also include aspects of behavior. So gate technology, how you walk, how you hold the phone, how you actually press on your phone and actually the velocity and pressure, depth. Those are the types of aspects that we actually have been investigating um, and actually have different proof of concepts with various performers now. Um, things that come out of the university, things that come out with small or big business. Um, and it's actually an, an aspect where we, we do believe it's going to be a combination of that multi-factor approach. Um, you're going to be able to get away from, hey, well, I have different levels of trust based on a scoring mechanism. I can say if I have a high trust score, then I'm going to have more access, right? If I have a lower trust score, it's an abnormal, someone else took my phone from me. Those are types of things where the phone can automatically detect and you're, not, you're going to get restricted access to you know, email, enterprise email, something like that. So it's a great area that sure. hopefully is on the horizon for most of us. So, so. on the internet, they really n will know if you're a dog. <laughs> <at this point. laughs> All right, so I, we have just a couple of minutes left. I'd like to just close uh, briefly on what are the overriding system management issues here in the new mobile era, and how will the government go about them? So I think that you know we talked about some of the challenges that we've got for mobility, and one is you know being able to move fast enough to keep up. So that's one of the other challenges, and, and the the perception or the expectation for our younger workforce to want us to, to move faster. Um, I'll talk a little bit back on derived credentials for a second. I, I think that the, the good news about mobility is the plumbing for all that stuff was already there. So, you know, the PKI stuff was already kind of under the covers. People use it every single day. I mean, my kids who use iPhones use PKI every single day and I have no idea they're using PKI, which is awesome. Um, the challenge for derived credential was marrying that to the higher identity proofing system, right? So taking that and, and, and kind of proving out the identity based upon the card side and then kind of marrying that to the soft cert. 
Um, I think the challenge is going to continue to to be keeping up with the rate of change, securing all of those things. So Vincent talks about a lot of research around identity. I see in San Francisco right now there are probably five new identity providers cropping up, new startups that are all working on identity behavioral identity, all these kinds of things, because they're looking at what's the next thing after this guy, right? I've got this watch where I, my credit card's on here. Why sure. can't I put my CAC on here? Well, you know, they, these are the kinds of things that, that are going to be be cropping up, and I think the challenge for all of us is how do I secure it? Because it's going to happen with or without us, so how do we secure it and deploy it? All right, I think we're going to have to end on that note. Uh, I want to thank today's guest. Terrific discussion. Hildy Fariolo is computer scientist at NIST. Vincent Stridipan is Program Manager for Mobile Security R&D at Homeland Security's Science and Technology Directorate. Jake Marcellus is Mobility Portfolio Manager at the Defense Information Systems Agency. Dave Harrity, Associate CIO for Enterprise Infrastructure and Operations at the General Services Administration. And Sean Frazier, Chief Technical Evangelist for the Public Sector at Mobile Iron. I'm Tom Temin, Federal News Radio 1500 AM and federalnewsradio.com. You can access this discussion. Simply visit federalnewsradio.com and use the keyword Mobile Iron. On behalf of Mobile Iron, thank you for joining us. A link to the archive session will be sent to you shortly. If you request a training certificate, you will also receive an email with download instructions after the webinar. This concludes our discussion. Thank you.